UN Watch monitors the United Nations and promotes human rights for all. When Russia, China, Cuba, and Saudi Arabia ran for a seat on the Human Rights Council, UN Watch led the opposition with high-profile events at key venues. Here we launched our global campaign to oppose non-democracies running for re-election. I'm humbled by the moral force in this room. We're here with leading dissidents who have either suffered in political prison or their family members have been killed because of their democracy advocacy. Voting to put China on the Human Rights Council would be like a picking of the fox to guard the hen's house. This is, from my own experience, one of the largest MP all-party representation at any press conference that I've seen. Thanks to UN Watch, leading media worldwide reported the hypocrisy. For the first time ever, Russia lost. UN Watch gives a global platform to victims of the worst regimes. About 3,200 girls and women are still kidnapped uh, in ISIS control, under ISIS control. UN Watch's Geneva Summit for Human Rights draws an audience of 500 human rights activists, diplomats, journalists, and students. I went back to my house. I was attacked. I was abducted. I was beaten. I was trapped in stocks, chained, urinated upon, spat at, Fed glass. In only 15 years, Russia has become a truly authoritarian regime with political prisoners and political repressions. And my father used to say, you know, if you want to join me, you will lose your job. You have to, uh, you have to make this choice. So, but when my father was assassinated, uh, my choice was very obvious and evident, and it was my moral choice, and I was ready to lose my job. Being the daughter of a political prisoner, is a very hard experience. It's, it's, it was my fear since I can remember. I'm 25 years old and all I can remember is living with fear and living with the oppression of not knowing what day the government was gonna take my father away for, for speaking up. Well, it happened, it became my reality. Thanks to UN Watch, the victims' testimonies were highlighted by more than 80 TV, radio, and news agencies around the world. Shirin a 20 ans. Elle a vécu l'enfer, réduite à l'esclavage sexuel pour des hommes de Daesh pendant 9 mois. Invitée mardi dernier à Genève pour un sommet sur les droits humains, elle témoigne. Quand ils nous ont capturés, ils ont d'abord séparé les filles et les garçons. Ils ont emmené les filles de plus de 5 ans pour les vendre et les violer. Et les garçons dès l'âge de 8 ans pour les convertir à l'islam. Depuis deux ans et demi, elle n'a plus de nouvelles de sa mère ni de ses quatre frères et sœurs. Il ne lui reste que son père, qui vit dans un camp de réfugiés en Irak. UN Watch defends the rights of Iranian women who are arrested for not wearing the forced hijab. In Sweden, an extreme left-wing government boasts of its feminist foreign policy. But when they went to Iran to sign lucrative trade deals, UN Watch called out the hypocrisy of Sweden's female ministers who bowed before President Rouhani, covering themselves in hijabs and long black coats, betraying Iranian women and their own principles. UN Watch's press release became the primary source for what turned into an international embarrassment. UN Watch's Twitter exploded with over 5,000 retweets. The story exploded again when UN Watch showed how, in the same week, courageous female chess champions refused to go to Iran in protest against the forced hijab. The story went viral. 400,000 people clicked on the UN Watch website, causing it to crash. UN Watch sparked headlines worldwide on Iran's oppression of women. Thanks to UN Watch, the story was reported on by dozens of major media outlets around the globe.
Le gouvernement suédois fait scandale. Les représentantes suédoises ont porté le voile islamique pour plaire au régime iranien, un régime qui pratique l'inégalité des sexes et qui persécute les homosexuels. Choc et incompréhension. Une ONG parle de « marche de la honte ». Saudi Arabia is the world's worst violator of women's rights. Absurdly, it just got elected to the UN Women's Rights Commission. Once again, it was UN Watch who exposed the hypocrisy to the world in a social media blitz that went viral. Thanks to UN Watch, the story sent shockwaves around the globe. One reaction to this news was this quote from the UN Watch executive director saying, Electing Saudi Arabia to protect women's rights is like making an arsonist into the town fire chief. Could this uh, perhaps be seen um, as an attempt to, to encourage Saudi Arabia to, to bolster women's rights at home? No, absolutely not. It sends the message that the United Nations doesn't really care about women's rights, and it's a betrayal of women's rights activists in Saudi Arabia and indeed worldwide. The Mensenrechten Organization UN Watch is verbijsterd over the benoeming of Saudi Arabia to the head of the Vrouwenraad of the Verenigde Nations. The United Nations has betrayed Saudi women's rights activists by putting their oppressor in a position of power and influence. UN Watch further revealed that at least five European countries voted for Saudi Arabia, sparking a firestorm in Belgium, Sweden, Norway, and Ireland. Opposition MPs demanded to know how their governments voted. I want to know what did our government do? What did our officials do in the UN? Did they? support Saudi Arabia. In Belgium, the Prime Minister was forced to admit that they voted for the Saudis. Je regrette ce vote. Si c'était à refaire... At the Human Rights Council, dictatorships try to silence UN Watch. We asked the government of Turkish President Erdogan if it cares about human rights. Why did they just fire more than 100,000 teachers, university deans, judges, prosecutors, religious figures, and public servants? We asked Pakistan, when will they release Asya Bibi, the innocent Christian mother of five, now on death row on the absurd charge of blasphemy? We reject what has been said by this political organization called UN Watch. But UN Watch and its partners will never give up. I will fight with my life and I will even sacrifice my own freedom to be able to say that I live in a free country. But I have decided not to give up. Never, never, ever to give up. And we do continue this fight. UN Watch, lighting the candle of truth, defending human rights for all.